Horizon's characters lack the qualities to feel invested, immersed, engaged, and not one part of 2.0 dealt with any aspect That's what of Nintendo these got villagers. wrong in the new game. They come I over drama. now, but I no, I don't even care about this anymore. Shut bloodshed. up and go the away. You are just irritating. Feel like just objects for me to judge on appearances and get items from. You can't talk about Animal Crossing New Horizons without addressing its flaws. And unfortunately, Slunk. New Horizons Blanca, big Booker, the Copper, what the fuck fuck is, is this in fucking game? game. Shit. Cyrus, dig me, Pelly Pete. Fucking Phineas! Animal Crossing New Horizons the newest installment in the Animal Crossing series. It has the largest fan base of any Animal Crossing game, but tell me why it's also caused the biggest divide in the Animal Crossing community. Fans either plain hate the game, or they say they love it and say it's the best in the entire series, or are confused on what to think of it. What are my thoughts? Well, personally, I think New Horizons is not Animal Crossing. It has nothing of what made this series so unique. It lost identity in the pursuit of customization. This is how Animal Crossing lost its identity due to the new direction the developers want to take the series. How? To understand what I mean, we need to talk about what Animal Crossing started as and how the series continued throughout its life. Note, just so you know, I only played City Folk, New Leaf, and New Horizons, plus the side games, and yes, that means Amiibo Festival. My Animal Crossing started originally on the N64, then moved on to the GameCube. It was a game about living in a new town filled with a bunch of talking animals. Katsuya Agushi, he is the one behind the idea of Animal Crossing. A little bit of context and backstory for him, he had to move because he had to go work at Nintendo, and this meant he had to leave behind his friends and his family. Oh, boo Feeling like he was isolated, he began to want to create a game that had family, friendship, and community. Remember these because this is what creates the foundation for Animal Crossing. Yeah, just, just remember these in the back of your head as you watch this video. These later became a project called Animal Forest, later to be known as Animal Crossing. He dubbed Animal Crossing as a communication game, which, yeah, personally I do see that the game is all about talking to your animal neighbors, catching fish and bugs to sell or put in the museum, decorating your home, work for Tom Nook. Yeah, there really isn't a main goal in Animal Crossing. You kind of just decide what you want to do in the game. The first game doesn't have much, but it's where the roots of the series started. The game is meant to feel like you live in this town. In the game, if it's morning, it's morning. If it's night, it's night. Same goes with holidays, you know, if it's Halloween, it's Halloween in the game as well. Animals in this game were also just... dicks. Hey buddy, you need a ride? I was just on my way to the big doofus convention. <laughs> oh, toodle fuck. These animals were assholes and had attitude and personality. It made you feel like these animals were real. But if you did keep talking to them, you could potentially grow a friendship with them. What I'm saying is Animal Crossing started off as a game about avoiding the isolation of your own life to live in this imaginary world with animals. And that's what it continued to be in the next installments. Animal Crossing City Folk and Wild World. These two games expanded what the first game brought to the table. Many fans like to say that City Folk was the worst in the series. Yeah, just no. Like, no. And I'm a New Leaf fan. My first game in the Animal Crossing series was New Leaf, and that will forever always be my favorite game in the franchise. Mostly because of nostalgia, but many others have told me City Folk is their favorite, and why is that? Well, after playing the game for myself, I have to say it's because of the charm, the personality, and what the game has to offer. It's a lot more alive and it still contains what made the original so great. Sure, it's very similar to the first game and too similar to Wild World, 
but it's still an amazing game. I played it multiple times on stream to see what it was like, and wow. The game is actually really fun. If I had played City Folk before New Leaf, I probably would have been the same as many other fans and said that City Folk was my favorite. The dialogue in City Folk is, in my opinion, the best in the series. Well, from what I played at least, I didn't play the original on GameCube or Wild World, so I can't really give my own opinion or experience on those two games. But City Folk was amazing. It took me off guard multiple times on stream and it made me feel immersed and invested in this world that the developers created. What are you doing, Shruffles? Um, Shrunk? For seriously, that's like way too much. The world is all empty and depressed after a lame performance like that, Snooty. Bro, what? Bro, what? My man just straight up, what the? He straight up just, he cooked. He just roasted the shit out of Dr. Shrunk. That was harsh. Bro dug deep into it. I not I did not think he was gonna say that. That is fucked up truffles, but that was funny. Huh? What kind of shady ass place is this? Oh no, it's the fuzz. Quick hide the Hide the what? It's the fuzz, what? Must have caught us in a tailwind. We be early. Or I must be just speeding. Make sure you didn't leave nothing. Kept your wallet? You can't you can't leave that there. You got gar. For real, don't leave your wall. They actually they take your sh This by far had some of the best personality in the entire series next to the last two games. But the next game is when the series started to lose some of that charm. Animal Crossing New Leaf. The game I played as a kid and know the most about. Many fans criticize City Folk for being too much like past entries, especially City Folk. This made Nintendo step back and focus on creating a new experience for Animal Crossing players. Something fans wanted the most was customization. It's always been a thing fans wanted in the series, and this new game for the 3DS was going to deliver on that. In New Leaf, you start off the game kinda different this time. Move into a new town, as always, but this time a new character named Isabel asks you if you are the mayor of their town. You're not? Well, <laughs> I don't fucking care, because you are now the new mayor of this lovely town. Y yay. I feel like New Leaf did customization the best. It limited you to make sure you didn't feel like a god able to change everything about your landscape. Instead, it felt like you were just another resident of the town but the game still gave you enough freedom to do cool stuff with your town as well. New Leaf gave fans customization, but it knew when to limit it and knew when was best to cut it off. There aren't many responsibilities as mayor. Um, really all you can do is do your town flag and customize your town more, enact one of the four town ordinances, I think I said that word right, and start public works projects. Public works projects are more just like items you could put outside of your town to decorate it, but you could also get new bridges, structures, and new shops, and buildings. Some of these are locked behind villager dialogue, and it's kind of difficult because it's a good and a bad thing because villagers randomly will tell you this. Um, items and shops are locked behind different types of villagers, so you kind of have to talk to a certain villager to get the thing that you do want, so it's a good and bad thing. Editor's note, but I know I played this game for like years, but I just realized you could remodel Town Hall and the train station as well. When did this happen? What? Animal Crossing New Leaf felt like a breath of fresh air for the series. It added new mechanics while not destroying what made the original so unique. Only thing they really didn't add to customization was skin tones for your character that you play as. Not sure why, but the only way to make your skin darker was to tan under a clear sky and wait around 15 minutes. Other than that, the music, visuals, customization, characters, shops, everything was so well crafted. I could go on and on about this game, but we would be here all day and this video would probably be like an hour long and I'm, I'm, I'm not doing that. But remember when I said that this was the start of the downfall for the series? Well, I meant that as in the personality and charm your neighbors had. Yeah, this game was the downfall of villager dialogue. Even special characters lost a bit of charm too. This game Nintendo had to tone down the negativity the characters had in the past games. So a lot of villagers became noticeably a bit more stale in terms of personality and dialogue, 
They didn't have the sass, the crazy humor they had before. A lot of it was toned down in New Leaf. Still though, New Leaf was a fully finished game and the villagers could play hide and seek with you, go to your house, and invite you to theirs. Trade items, you could also give them catchphrases and make them give you better nicknames, or just make them say the most dumbest things ever, which is what I did. The game still had that charm and personality the past titles had, just less of it. The game was good enough to stand on its own, and the negatives it did have didn't ruin the experience for me. Unlike... What the f*** took you so long? Well goddamn, Foxy! I was staring at the wall! Okay. New Horizons. My thoughts. I love and hate this game. Why, you may ask? Well, because this is where I say the series died and became a hollow husk of what it once was. I wanted to like this game, love it even, but when I played it, I stopped playing it in a month. Yeah. Even with New Leaf, I still play the game to this day. It has so much content and so much charm that I never get bored with it, but with New Horizons, me and many others drop the game entirely after the first month. Why is that? I think it's because the game was doomed from the start. It didn't have longevity. And this is because Nintendo rushed out this game and gave us an unpolished and unfinished slice of a game at launch. When the game got originally announced, it had a release date of 2019. No new title, no gameplay. Just an announcement. When Nintendo later revealed the game at E3 2019, they delayed the game to March 20th of 2020. As the release date was approaching, I started to realize they really weren't showing much at all. They kept showing the beginning of the game and the first shops you always have at the start, but nothing way later in the game. Originally I thought, wow, they must be hiding the rest of the game so we could see it for ourselves. Oh, how wrong I was. No dumbass younger me, it's just that it wasn't finished, and those free updates that we thought were just for the holidays, no, they were also to patch in and add old features into New Horizons that could have been there at launch. I'm going to try to organize each point I want to talk about for New Horizons as best as I can. Maybe messy, but here's my take at it. New Horizons at launch was missing so much content. A lot of furniture from past games, special characters, shops, shop upgrades, holidays, features from past games, a lot of these just weren't there at launch. Basic things in an Animal Crossing game just weren't there. New Leaf and all of the past games somehow had more content than New Horizons. How, how does a 3DS game have more content than a Switch game? That just doesn't make sense. For the free updates, holidays, I did understand since they added them when they were supposed to happen, but the rest were just dumb not to add at launch. This is why many new and old players just left at the first month mark. Once you got past the beginning of the game and customized your whole town, there was nothing to do. The game got boring, stale, and without anything to keep players invested, a lot of its player base left. It took Nintendo till July to add swimming. Fucking swimming! Okay, now that we discussed how it was at launch, I want to talk about the game now that it's basically finished three years later. Okay, so what Nintendo did fix is, so furniture came back, Yay? As I said, all of these things should have been here at launch. Shops came back, kind of? They are now just placed at Harvey's campsite, which I find so fucking lazy. These aren't even shops you can go inside of. They are literally just the character models in front of camping vans that look like the vans in the mobile game Pocket Camp, but in HD. These don't have personality either. It just feels like a lazy way to add these shops without putting in effort since fans are bitching so much about them. Also, shop upgrades? Yeah, those are gone too. Well, kind of. Nook's Cranny only has one shop upgrade. Only one! In New Leaf, it had four different upgrades for the shop. 
so that means five different variations for Nook's Cranny. Many other shops had upgrades and extensions too. Some shops would even merge. I'm sorry I keep comparing New Horizons to New Leaf, but it's only fair when that was the previous game and was on the 3DS and was somehow better and had more content. What the fuck is this? We waited eight years for New Horizons and this is all they did? Now that the game is fully updated, I still think it's missing so much content. And the content it has now is implemented so badly, it's just lazy. But with that out of the way, I would like to now talk about the multiplayer. Okay, I'm sorry I keep comparing the two games, but New Leaf somehow did multiplayer better. I didn't say this when I was talking about New Leaf, but in New Leaf, this turtle named Cap'n takes you to an island called Tortimer Island, where we do get to see more of Cap'n's family. In Tortimer Island, we can collect rare fish and bugs, more fruit, but we can also get to play mini games, not just in single player, but also with friends. In New Leaf, you could play with friends either locally or online. Doing this, you could show off your town, but also play mini games at Tortimer's Island. Which is really fun. It made multiplayer a lot better. It made it feel like a whole new side game to what was already a perfect game. Now, New Horizons. You son of a bitch, Tom Nook! <laughs> yeah, I owe you money! Of course, New Horizons removed this feature and also ruined Cap'n's role. New Horizons multiplayer is like really fucking boring. It's just someone or yourself showing off yours or their town. And there isn't anything else to make playing with friends more fun like New Leaf did. I don't know how New Horizons fucked up multiplayer. The 3DS did it perfectly. And somehow, the waiting time for online is even worse in New Horizons. Like how? How? You're on a better console. How does it take longer to appear into your friend's town? But yeah, the multiplayer kind of sucks. Um, ne ne next point. I'm not gonna talk about the main mechanics of customization in this game, like how you can't buy or craft stuff in bulk since so many others have said this time and time again. My main issue is how Nintendo pursued customization and forgot what was the original intention of the game. Surprisingly, a YouTube comment I saw said it best. Animal Crossing is no longer a game you live in, it's a town you create. The developers were so much more focused on customization that they overdid it. You don't feel immersed in this world. In previous games, villagers can move into any part of your town without your permission. Like, if you planted really good flowers somewhere, they could move right on top of them, like a massive fucking DICK! Yes, it sucked, but this is what made the villagers feel real, like they had their own sense of free will. In New Horizons, everything is so bland and safe. You could tell villagers where to move and place their houses. Everything is perfectly designed for you. This town, you can create and shape into whatever you want. It's too perfect. This game feels like a worse version of Minecraft. Remember how I said villagers started to decline in New Leaf? Well here, they are so much more boring and bland. And they don't play hide and seek or visit your house or do anything to actually make up for being so fucking boring. Villagers are literally only loved for their looks and appearance now, unlike before where they had personality that backed them up. Even special characters lost so much charm and backstory. Now you may ask, but Blush, who cares? We have all the new mechanics now! Are the customizations are terraforming? Think of it like this. You go to buy brand new tires that have LED lights unlike your last ones. They are super cool, but the thing is, you don't have the car. All of these new mechanics are cool, but the base game isn't finished for the new mechanics to be interesting. Plus, the game is way too customizable and gives the player way too much freedom to where it loses its identity and what made the franchise so unique. It lost all of the charm that the previous games had, what this franchise was known for. It lost its identity.
All right, for my last points, I would like to do a few things that like wouldn't fit into a category. So here goes the first one. One time a diehard New Horizons fan replied to a comment of mine criticizing the lack of content in the game saying that, it's not lacking content, it doesn't need anything, it's finished. Which is total bullshit. Yes, still to this day, it's lacking content. Then the commenter tried to compare Wild World to New Horizons, saying that Wild World cut a lot of its content like holidays, and why don't we criticize that game? Hmm, maybe because the Nintendo DS couldn't handle Animal Crossing. Literally, the DS didn't have the memory to handle Animal Crossing. It had a reason to cut content. The developers were forced to because of the DS's low memory. New Horizons doesn't have this issue. It was a choice. If I have a few good things to say about New Horizons, I would say the beginning of the game is very strong. Before you meet KK Slider, the game oozes with personality and creativity. The beginning is a breath of fresh air for the series again. And you can tell that this is where most of the effort went into. The beginning is very strong and the visuals are the best in the series. I just wish the rest of the game was like this and had this much effort and personality poured into it. Animal Crossing is a very interesting series that has changed over the years. New Horizons being the biggest jump, becoming a hollow husk of what it used to be, as the developers forgot what the game was created to be and turned the franchise into something completely different. New Leaf being the perfect blend of customization and having limits to your town, and New Horizons being the one to overdo customization and lose its identity. If you like New Horizons, that's great. I'm happy you can find enjoyment in this game, but me personally, I can't. When people say the game is boring and ask why people like this franchise while not playing any of the older games, it upsets me because the older games are way better in terms of an Animal Crossing game. They are finished, completed, and still have the identity of an Animal Crossing game. Thank you for watching the video if you got this far. Animal Crossing is a series I entirely love. I didn't want to hate this game but it was a disaster of a launch that couldn't put itself back together, losing its identity and what made it so great in the first place.